Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another meal prep slash batch cooking video. So in this video, it is super, super small as far as a meal prep. Honestly, I didn't have a lot of time. I really wasn't even in the mood to meal prep this week, but this is how you meal prep when you're not in the mood and you don't want to do anything big. So let's get in the kitchen and let's get started. So we are going to start out with breakfast. I only made a few eggs for Oscar in the morning because he would rather have just a couple of eggs every couple of days and then make them again fresh. So that is around a tablespoon of grass-fed butter. I'm just melting that in the bottom of my pan. Those are my new pans, love them. They're always linked down below. They actually sent me some pans that were um, oven safe as well. So I'll link those down there too. But I put four eggs in there. We're gonna go in with some salt, some pepper, some everything but the bagel seasoning. All we're going to do is scramble those babies up and I will add a little bit of cheese. Sometimes Oscar asks for cheese and sometimes he doesn't. So I asked him and he wanted cheese this time, but super simple, easy, nice breakfast that you can just reheat on your way out the door or when you get to work. Next on the list, we are going to be making beef and broccoli. So that is two pounds of flank steak. I just picked that up at Walmart. Uh, I opened it up. I cut it into four pieces so that way it was a little bit more manageable and it would be easier to cut because the way that you're going to want to cut that is you're going to want to cut it against the grain. You're going to get a much more tender meat when you do that. And I just cut them into thin little slices like that so that way I could saute them in the bottom of my Instant Pot because I am going to cook this in the Instant Pot. So I just went ahead and turned my Instant Pot on saute because like I said, we are going to saute that flank steak. And while that heats up, I started getting the sauce ready. That is all the ingredients that you're going to need for that. So the first thing you're going to need is one cup of beef broth. And then you're gonna need a half a cup of soy sauce. I use the Bragg's liquid aminos, around a tablespoon of minced garlic, and then around a tablespoon of ginger. You can grate your ginger. I just used that ginger paste, and I didn't use quite a tablespoon because that would be a lot for us. And then it says a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I didn't use red pepper flakes. I used cayenne pepper because I didn't have any pepper flakes. And then I also added in a third a cup of that swerve brown sugar, mixed it up really well, and then I added some avocado oil to the bottom of that Instant Pot so that way I could saute that up and the flank steak didn't stick to the Instant Pot. And the way she did it is she kind of um, seared them. She, she was what, much more patient than what I am. She took each individual one and seared them on each side I literally threw them all in there and just stirred them up and just kind of sauteed them at the bottom. Uh, honestly, I think it's going to be just fine. However you want to do it, if you have the patience to do that, then you go ahead and do it that way. I personally don't. Then after that finished sauteing, I went ahead and added in our mixture that we made and just gave it another stir, put the lid on the Instant Pot, made sure it was on sealing. I canceled the saute and I went ahead and pressed manual and I let that cook for 10 minutes. Once it was done cooking for 10 minutes, I let it do a natural release for another 10 minutes. It ended up going a little over that. It was like 12 minutes. And then I did a quick release. I'm also going to add xanthan gum. So after I did that and I took the lid off and stuff, I went ahead and put the Instant Pot back on saute. So that way when I put the xanthan gum in there, it would really heat that up and thicken that up. So as far as the xanthan gum, you can use between a fourth to a half a teaspoon. Mine ended up taking a half a teaspoon and it thickened up quite nicely. So I did not add the broccoli to this until we got ready to eat it. So this is a brand new recipe and my thoughts on this recipe is it was good. It was not my favorite. Would I ever make it again? Maybe, but it would definitely never be on like a rotation list. 
Next up, again, we're just going to keep it simple. The simplest thing is take some proteins, such as these chicken thighs. I'm going to take those Kirkland ground sirloin hamburgers. Those are one-third patties. And then I'm going to take some of those Kirkland hot dogs. Super simple, garlic salt, black pepper. Obviously, you can season it with whatever you want to season it with. I literally seasoned everything with the same thing. So I threw all of the chicken thighs on my grill at the same time. No cleanup, no mess. I just seasoned them all with that garlic salt and that pepper. Let the grill do the work and look at those beauties. Granted, we have a large family, so stuff like this does not last long in our family. Holy moly. When I just pick proteins to grill on the grill, that goes so fast, but they were delicious. Those were boneless and skinless. And then once those were done, I did go ahead and add the hot dogs as well as the hamburger to the grill. Same thing. Let the grill do the work. Keep the mess outside. Not a ton of dishes. It's amazing. <laughs> you can even do your vegetables on the grill as well. Throw them in foil. Obviously spray your foil so they don't stick. Let the grill do the work and then you have no mess. Again, seasoned everything up. That's the way the hot dogs turned out. I left some of the hot dogs a little bit darker and I left some of them a little bit lighter because some of us in the house like them darker, some like them lighter. So I was trying to like, you know, please everybody. <laughs> Sometimes that's not always possible, but... And then I kind of did the same thing with the hamburgers. Some of them I made pretty well done and then others I tried to make them like around medium because uh, not everybody in my family likes their hamburgers medium. I personally like mine that way, but not everybody. Next up is my most favorite recipe that I made in this meal prep and that is Keto OMG Bars. These are so good. That is why they call them OMG. It was definitely for a reason. So we're going to start with the cookie crust. We're going to use a cup of almond flour, a tablespoon of coconut flour, a half a teaspoon of baking powder, a fourth a teaspoon of salt, and then I like to go in with my whisk and whisk all the dry ingredients together before I add the wet ingredients. Then when we add the wet ingredients, we are going to add one egg as well as two tablespoons of melted butter. And again, we're going to mix that up until it makes like a cookie dough. Get a small casserole dish ready. I went ahead and sprayed it really well. I just put the cookie at the very bottom and manipulated it with my hands to the bottom of the pan. To me, that's the easiest way to do it. Then we are going to bake these at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. Then I went ahead and got the top layer started. So it is one cup of chopped pecans. I put the pecans into a plastic bag because the ones that I had were not chopped. And then I just took my kitchen hammer and, you know, smashed them with that to make them chopped. Went ahead and put that in the bowl as well as one cup of unsweetened coconut and one and a half cups of lilies. Actually, the lilies, I don't even think that was quite one and a half cups. Um, those are the bags that are a little bit smaller that I get at Walmart, but it took that entire bag of lilies and I just mixed all that together. That literally just sounds like a great trail mix to me. <laughs> it's almost like a trail mix in your dessert. So good. After I got all of that mixed together, we are going to start to make the sauce. So it's going to be kind of like a like a condensed milk type sauce. So the first thing that you are going to want to do, those are all the ingredients that we're gonna use, but you're gonna take 10 tablespoons of butter along with a third cup plus one tablespoon of erythritol, whatever other erythritol you wanna use. I use monk fruit. And then you are just gonna stir that and stir that and stir that till the cows come home. No, no, seriously. Until it kind of is like a golden brown like that. And then after you get that golden color, you are going to take one half cup of heavy whipping cream, stir it in really nicely. After everything I put in there, I just stirred it. So I put in the vanilla, stirred it, and the vanilla was one teaspoon, put in an eighth a teaspoon of salt, stirred it some more, 
And then last but definitely not least, I did go in with around four drops of stevia. Then once that is finished, the shortbread cookie should be cooled enough and we take half of that sauce, put it over the shortbread cookie. Then we are going to take the entire amount of that topping layer, dump the entire thing over that. And then I just use my hands and kind of spread all of that out. And then you ready for it? You ready? We are going to dump the rest of that sauce over the top of that, bake that at 350 degrees for only about five minutes. You're going to pull that lovely, beautiful creation out of that oven. We are going to put that in the fridge for a couple of hours, let it cool, and that is the deliciousness that came out of that. Again, oh my gosh, that is why they are called that because that's all I'm going to say. These are delicious. My pickiest of pickiest eaters loved this, you guys. This would be the perfect Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever dessert. And it was so simple and easy to make. All right, that is going to conclude this week's meal prep. Like I said, super tiny, but at least I did something. At least I felt like I accomplished a little bit and we did have a little bit to start the week. Didn't last long, but you know what? It was something. If anything, I hope this video gave you guys inspiration and motivation to jump in your kitchen and get to cooking. But like always, I am praying for you, your family, and your country. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate every single one of you guys. And don't forget to go out there and make today even better than yesterday. And I will talk to you in my next video. Bye. But I don't know why You hit the road But you don't realize I'm on the back when you're around I won't think twice when you're around